hill or a dune to break the monotony. This was truly a place where no photos presented itself. But then suddenly something appeared in the distance, and as he came closer, he saw it was an abandoned small round railroad shack. It had a cone-shaped roof with a stovepipe poking through the top. Inside were some rusty pickaxes and train axles and detritus from the railroad days. Pete looked at this little shack and thought to himself, well, at least it's something. And he figured, well, he might as well set up camp there for the night. At least he could make a photograph of the hut, since there was nothing else. Where Pete had actually stopped was station number six on the cartoon to Wadi Halfa railway line that was built by Lord Kitchener at the beginning of the century to take goods down to the Nile River from Khartoum. So he takes his Nikon SD. It's a rangefinder camera that's made in the tradition of the famous Lycus. And he starts to walk around the hut. It's tiny, so it only takes a few minutes to walk all the way around it. The sun is slowly setting in the west, and it's sitting low in this dust-filled horizon. And as he walks around the hut at various distances, he kind of does this thing of where he's walking around it in concentric circles. He notices something, and that is that depending on where he stands, the sun is either above or to the left or to the right, and more importantly, relative in its size to the hut. He said, it probably wasn't the first time that the thought occurred to me, but it was the first time it hit me like a baseball bat. I'm not just taking photos, I'm making a photo. I'm in the driver's seat. I'm in control. He makes a few exposures. He, he says that he seems to recall he made one where the sun was at the top of the roof. But then he moves closer and he moves to the side and he shoots the final shot, the one that we know today. He places the sun so it just touches the roof. And it's about two-thirds down the roof. He knows it's a keeper. For Pete, this is an epiphany. It's a lesson that would become second nature to him in the years to follow. The photo actually quickly gained fame. It was added to the George Eastman collection a very short time after he returned from Africa. Pete doesn't view this as a career-changing photo. He views it as a photo that helped him to define his work consciously and with great intentionality. And from this point on, he was in the driver's seat of his photography, instead of being a passive observer waiting for photographs to come to him. Let's take a closer look at the composition of this amazingly elegant photograph. At first glance, you have the impression that this is a ball that's rolling down a triangle. Hence the name Rolling Ball, which confirms that the illusion that he's created is intentional. But once you look again, you realize it's actually the sun and the roof. And I realize that the only reason why you pick that up is the stovepipe at the top, which is a recognizable shape, tells you this is a roof. And the three-dimensionality that's in the colored shades of the sun, that tells you this is the sun. The fact that he's placed the sun to touch the roof just so, is really critical to the effect, and also placing the sun two-thirds down the roof slope. The other important thing here is that the, the darkest point is the rooftop stovepipe chimney thingy at the top. The lightest part is the sun, and the effect is of one moving away from the other. So there's this interesting little tension that happens between these two. The focal length has flattened the composition, so it reads really like the interplay of geometric shapes. It's a triangle and a sphere on a flat surface. Instead of what is really a three-dimensional scene with elements that are literally billions of miles apart. There are three colors only in this composition. There's the deep orange background, which is graduated from dark to light, from bottom to top. Then there is the dirty yellow circle of the sun. 
and the purplish brown triangle of the roof. And then it all finishes off with the tiny, almost black arrow tip of the chimney pot. When you remove the color from the image, you realize that the color tones are pretty close to each other in relativity. The photo becomes all flat and dull in black and white. And actually you lose the ability to recognize it for what it is. Because you lose some of that subtle color graduation in the sun. And you lose some of the subtlety in the chimney pot at the top. So it becomes more difficult to recognize that this is the sun that you're looking at. This is the sky. And that this is a roof. When you overlay the rule of thirds on this picture, you notice that the only thing that aligns with any of the, the third intersections are the sun, which again reinforces the importance of the sun. Together with being the brightest point in the picture, it's also the only point that lands on one of the four critical points uh, in terms of composition. That taken together with the fact that it's touching the roof makes it the clear focus of the photograph. The color tonality in this photograph is a warm monochromatic palette. Instead of the bright blue sky, a whitish roof and a blazing sun, we have a dark orange sky, a yellow sun and a purplish brown roof all talking to each other in the same color range. This is one of those photos that not only use color to unify the design, it actually uses the color to help us tell the story as we saw in the fact that you recognize the sun as the sun because of its color. You recognize the roof as the roof because of its color. But at the same time, the color is tying the whole design together, creating a unified impression. The fact that the sun has become a rolling ball that's rolling down the slope, instead of being a star dropping in the horizon behind a railway shack, is a brilliant bit of lateral thinking making one thing look like another and creating layers of tension and interpretation in what was really a very simple monochrome photo of two geometric shapes. It is an elegant and abstract photo. It is profound in its simplicity. And that's the key insight that Pete gained when making this photo and that you see over and over again after this photo an intentional juxtaposition of elements to create an interesting tension. Pete had discovered that he had the power and the control over what and how he makes a photo. And it would be an insight that he would use for the rest of his career. I want to encourage you to go and take a look at Pete's work at PeteTurner.com. And I want to extend my gratitude to Pete for taking the time to talk to me about this photograph and for telling me about his incredible career that he's had. Please join me again in December when you strip down another great photo to find its essence. And thank you for watching.